Okay, hi everybody. Um, I'm going to talk this afternoon about five ways to be a feminist without getting disillusioned. And um, you know, 10 years ago, you barely hear it mentioned, but I'm really happy that gradually over the last couple of years, newspapers and magazines have finally stopped telling us that guess what? Feminism's back. Um, at one time, it seemed as if you couldn't go a month without an article declaring it'd suddenly become trendy to believe in gender equality and that feminism, often declared dead in the 1990s, was alive once more. And what we've witnessed and what I'm really glad to have been a part of is a decade of renewed interest in feminism, grassroots groups forming and the revival of feminist marches and campaigns focusing on many different issues. And much of this, of course, has been aided by the internet, um, which is now a key facilitator of consciousness raising. And the fact that feminist campaigns and activists are now regularly making headlines is a credit to all those who work so hard for equality. Um, and as someone who took their first tentative steps into feminism around the time that what's now being referred to by some as the fourth wave started gathering momentum, um, I see many people come and go. And there's an inevitability to this turnover, I think. People go through different seasons of finding their way and thrashing out their truths. And long-term activism and professional feminism aren't for everyone. But recently, however, I think there's been a move away from the buoyant mood surrounding feminism's so-called comeback and talk instead of a movement in crisis tarnished by toxic and exclusionary behaviour, um, as well as a gulf between high-profile privileged voices and more marginalised ones. And I know this has left many women disillusioned by what they've encountered. You know, women who, on finding feminism, have felt unable to ask questions or express their true feelings. And they've seen the con consequences of saying the wrong thing. And most of all, they felt judged for the way they live their lives. Sometimes it seems as though for some people, um, the importance of ideological purity trumps everything. And at the other end of the spectrum, I've seen seasoned activists despairing at rifts that seem too difficult to work through. The feminist civil rights activist and lawyer Florence Kennedy called it horizontal hostility. She saw these internal rifts as misdirected anger that we'd be better focused on oppressors. None of this sounds particularly positive, does it? I mean, a few months ago, a national newspaper published a column written by a young woman entitled, My Generation of Feminists is Depressing Me. I read it and I thought, come on, you know, are you really going to write an entire movement off because you don't like the fact that not all feminists agree on everything? Because I believe we shouldn't, and I think we've got a lot to celebrate. So how can we counter this disillusionment that seems to make women run from feminism? I think firstly we need to be outward looking. You know, as people who are passionate about ending injustice, one of the worst things we can do is fail to look beyond our own circumstances. Feminism is not compatible with individualism. Just like all progressive movements, it needs to focus on the liberation of all women. And it's not so fashionable now to talk about sisterhood, is it? I've seen women saying, oh, being a feminist means I shouldn't have to like and support all women. Well, let me tell you, if your main concern is um, whether or believing in equality means you have to be nice to other women, then you've probably got to rethink your priorities. We have to remember that we're united by the oppression we face and feel motivated to act accordingly. It was fascinating and timely for me to read In Our Time um, the veteran activist Susan Brownmiller's memoir of the feminist movement in the 60s and 70s earlier this year. And she wrote about rifts in the movement that ended close friendships and led to the disbanding of groups. And she wrote that despite the pain it caused, she came to see this internal strife as par for the course in the movement. And she wrote it was necessary to believe above all else that it was worth it to see women's liberation realized. As women, we've been socialized to minimize conflict and to look for affirmation in everything we do. But I think when we look back at feminist history, we can see that this internal strife is nothing new and that we, it should be something we can grow and learn from rather than something that means the end of our engagement with feminism. Secondly, I think we need to take breaks in order to recharge. More than ever, we're expected to be on all the time, and the news cycle and the internet gives us a constant stream of things to care about. Activists are particularly prone to burnout, and it's no wonder, because people demand much, and you're the first person who gets criticised if something goes wrong. And self-care is key here. Maybe that means you have to take time away from group meetings, you know, a holiday, step back from writing or campaigning, or deactivating social media accounts. And stepping back for a season gives you time to feel rested, yet also time to return with fresh inspiration. 
Thirdly, I think it's so important to draw strength from the support and friendship of other inspiring women. Feminism needs to be broad-shouldered and non-competitive. You know, you need to have good relationships. I can't emphasize this point enough. It's easier for some people than others, though, to find joy in community. You know, maybe you're part of a group or you have lots of like-minded friends, but for others, that's harder. If you're like me and you found feminist community primarily online, you might not get to see these friends very often. But however you choose to maintain your friendships, make sure you've got people you can count on for support. I'm so proud to know some of the people I've met through the feminist movement, and it's wonderful to draw strength from them. Two years ago, I was part of a group of women who started getting together to talk about the issues we face and build community. And what started as a few murmurings on Twitter has now become a quarterly gathering of women whose support has proved invaluable to each other, and we got involved in numerous projects together. That's the power of women who support each other. Fourthly, I think we need to remember that the task is great. Nobody ever said that smashing patriarchy was going to be easy. Each wave of feminism has achieved great things for women, but at the same time, some women have benefited more than others, and that's why we have to carry on. When you lay it out, you know, abuse, exploitation, poverty, violence, discrimination, it's overwhelming, and I think that's why some people end up thinking there's not much point trying to do anything at all. And changes don't happen overnight. Some people criticize mainstream campaigns as being too focused on easy wins that don't do much for the majority of women. We should always be mindful of the inclusivity of campaigns, but I do believe that every little helps. There's a saying, many small people who in many small places do many small things can alter the face of the world. You can't focus on changing everything at once, so focus instead on the areas you feel called to and the issues you feel most passionate about. And remember that when systemic injustice has been happening for centuries, things are never going to be straightforward. I think that's a good line for me to reiterate. Things are never going to be straightforward as I come to my fifth and final point. If we want to be feminists who don't get disillusioned, we need to be prepared to learn and be compassionate towards those who are learning learning. One of the keys to finding your place in the movement is understanding that you need to be on a journey, and that involves learning, developing your opinions, and listening to what others have to say. Feminism isn't some cosy women's club that exists purely to pat you on the back and make you feel good about yourself. You know, sorry if you're under that illusion, because you will find your assumptions challenged. People will disagree with you, but learning about and coming alongside women with different experiences to your own is vital. It's not something to run from. Compassion is often underrated these these days. In recent years, many feminists have identified the increasing focus of internet activism on so-called call-out culture, in which criticism of things other activists have done or said becomes performative, you know, activism that appears to exist only to draw attention to the perceived wrongs of fellow activists. But while we need to speak out against problematic behavior, our potential lies in listening to and learning from each other. I think if we spend all our time trying to find fault in the actions of other imperfect human beings, we lose sight of what's truly important, and becoming disillusioned is inevitable.